Alright, so this car uh, I'm going to build with 5 volt pistons. So I have my 5 volt pistons here and I'll get a blue paper towel to put this stuff on so you can see it better. And um, the 5 volt pistons you can get in your car is, uh, is 1.5 volts. So this is a good, good base I think. Sometimes I like to drill the the rear holes up a bit uh, to 1.6, especially if the track is a little uh, rough. Um, but 1.5, if you're on a pretty smooth or normal track, uh, they, they will be a good base setting. So that's why I um, I mo mainly use the 5 volt pistons, uh, 1.5 all around. So yeah, I have those here. They're pre-drilled, like you see, nice uh, nice pistons here, um, and they have a good fit in the shock body as well. Some um, some brands, uh, uh, they have some smaller sizes. These are a little bigger, so there's not that much blow by. Um, this is a setting, of course. Um, but these are a little tighter in the, in the uh, body. So. Um, so what I start first with is mounting the, uh, the O-ring here in the, in the spring collars um, and thread them on the shock bodies. I just put it in there. Sometimes I need to, to put some uh, some lube on here, but uh, these uh, these shocks they thread on very nicely here on the body, so you don't really need it. Um, they spin free, spin nice without it. So I just put them up quite a bit here because I know that mounting my car and setting the right height, I end up having them right here. I'll do this other one. Push it in there. Make sure it sits nice in the groove. And thread it on here. Right about there. Then next step, I like to to mount the um, the O-ring or um, yeah the rubber piece here for the shock cap, uh, which is going to seal the shock when you close it. So when I mount my um, my O-ring here for the shock cap, um, you can see there there is a square edge side to it and one which is not completely square. So I always like to, to mount it with this square area towards the shock body, meaning that the other side will go into the shock cap first. So this is how I mount it. This can be a little tricky to, to get in, in place right, but you need to make sure that it's completely down there in the groove, otherwise it will leak when you when you tighten the shock shock cap to the body when you're uh, closing your shock here after, after you filled it with oil. So I like to push it with my finger and then I can take a wrench, I take a 1.5 and just make sure and go around like a complete lap like this and make sure it's in there in the groove. And like you see it sits, sits nicely in there now. So yeah, this is important to make sure they, they sit there um, in the right place. Just do the other one here. Put it down there and I'm just make sure again with my 1.5 branch here that it's completely in the groove. And yeah, just like that. Next step is to build a chalk cartridge and as I am going with a 515 um, set up here, um, I, with the temperatures that we're having now, I would go 65 ET in front and 45 in the rear. That's uh, going to be a good, good start. So what I do is I, I just fill the, uh, the, the bottom here of the shock body with some oil. And then you're going to mount the first o-ring in there. Then I usually take a bit of extra oil before you go with the, the, uh, middle bushing 
that goes in between the two O-rings. Some more oil, O-ring, and then, well, then actually I put, <laughs> I put the small O-ring on here, of course, otherwise it's not going to seal very good. So once you have that black O-ring there on the outside of the shock body and you have the two O-rings inside properly, and I want to close this shock cartridge here. So make sure you have this one in the right way. So the small little um, edge here is going to go and fit nicely in this uh, aluminum piece that I'm threading on here. So yeah, I just tighten that down completely and uh, that one is done. On to the next one, same. Same thing again, some oil, o-ring, spacer in between the o-rings, second o-ring, then the ceiling o-ring outside of the body, then white pushing and then threading on the aluminum piece again. So I have both my shock bodies assembled and uh, next step is to mount the pistons on the shock shafts. So here, um, like I said before, the, the shock shafts are, are nice and shiny. Uh, you don't need to, to polish those. Uh, they come with a good finish out of the, out of the box. Let's put this uh, silver shim onto the shaft first. Then all these four pistons are all five by one five, so it doesn't matter which one you take. You put that one on there, and then you end up with, uh, with the nuts here on the top. When you tighten this nut, uh, you want to make sure you thread the nut all the way down to the piston, but you don't want to crank it down completely because it can break your piston when you're driving on the track. So what I do is like, I, when I start feeling some, uh, some tension there, I just stop and then I just back off ever so slightly just to make sure it's not it's not like completely cranked down. So I can spin the piston with some force, but it's not like completely free like you can see. So if I have some force I can spin it, but not completely free. Otherwise it can happen so that the piston can can break can split in half uh, when you drive. So that was the first one. Then doing the second one here. Shim goes on first and then piston, same procedure, and last the nut on the top. So all the way down and then back it off a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit more just so I can spin it with some force again. And then the next step is going to be to mount the shaft into the shock bodies. I'll start here and as I, as I use some oil when I mounted the o-rings into the shock cartridge before, um, you don't have to put any extra lube in there because they would be, be nice and the shock shaft will be sliding through um, very nicely and smooth. Next thing is to, to put the shock end on and as I mentioned earlier, um, I usually always run the short short ones, both front and rear. Um, and if I want to go on the third uh, insert location on the uh, suspension arm, um, I like to go with a longer shock shaft and still running the short um, shock end due to the amount of up trouble you, you will uh, get instead of running the long one because then you're sacrificed on up travel and I think the car runs better with some more up travel up front. So yeah, once you get it going, uh, it should come come on there pretty easy is to get it on there that is the difficult part but yeah like I said you can you can take your exacto knife and, and uh, kind of chamfer the edges here a bit uh, and it will make it make it a bit easier for you so yeah now this is on there then I measure the uh, the length of it here and I usually go around 33 mil in the front so that would be too far. I have to open it up a bit. 
yeah, like you see, 33 mil in the front is usually a good uh, distance for the uh, length of the shock shaft. Last thing is to put the 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 ball into the shock end here, and one of your shocks is now ready to be filled with oil. Same procedure on this on the second one here. Sliding the shock shaft through. Make sure it um, it goes through there smooth and nicely. It does. So time to thread on the shock end on this one as well. And again, checking so that you have the right length. Both, one, both shocks should, uh, of course, be equal to each other. So now both are at 33 mil. Push the ball into the shock end and both my shocks are ready to be filled with some oil. And again, a good base. Um, with the 5x15 um, in, I would say, a temperature around like 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Um, I think a 65 ET up front is a good start and uh, 45 uh, for the rear shock. So this is 65 here. So I will fill those almost all the way up to the top. I will just leave some space to be able to, to work the shock um, shock shaft up and down a little bit to make sure the the oils come out uh, a little bit quicker. You're always gonna have some uh, some air down on the bottom of the shock when you when you build the shocks for the first time. So just working the shock shaft up and down a bit will help those bubbles to to come up to the to the surface from at a uh, faster pace. Now I'll just wait um, a couple of minutes until I see all the the I mean most of the bubbles are out. Um, obviously this is a motion style shock reel building here, so there should be air inside the shock. So sometimes when you're at the race and you're in the rush, it's not always. Um, uh, I mean you don't always have to wait until there's absolutely no uh, air inside the. The shock oil. Uh, if you if you're in a rush, like I, like I said, uh, there's it's fine uh, with uh, with some air in uh, in, the, in the oil. Um, the motion style has air in the shock, so um, if you're in a rush, that's that's no problem. But as I have time now and and I'm making the build here uh, from the scratch, uh, building a new kit, I, I have some time that um, I can let the shock sit for a while and, and uh, come back to you when when the air is fully out. So while we're waiting for the air to, to come out of the front shocks here, um, I will assemble the rear shocks and, uh, in, and instead of just sitting around. So now I have come to the part where I will measure the uh, the length of the shock shaft in the rear, and like I said, 33 was for the front. In the rear, I usually go with uh, 43, so 10 mil longer in the rear than in the front is usually what I need to get the droop, droop settings I want in the in the rear. 32.8, just a little longer. So 
that's about it. 43. And like you see, the, uh, the shock end is unthreaded a bit. Um, I'm still using the short, short shock end to get the up travel, uh, like I said uh, earlier as well to you. Um, what you can do here, if the, sometimes if you're running in very hot temperatures, the plastic gets a little softer and um, then it's more safe to go with the long one. And if you do with, go with the long one, you can always shorten it ever so slightly if you uh, would like to get some more up travel than you do when mounting it like it is in stock. So it's about um, it's about three millimeter uh, more uh, long than the short one, and that will of course decrease your up travel. Um, so if you're on a rough track, yeah, it will be safer running the long one uh, due to uh, the threads will go in deeper inside the shock end and therefore more safe. Like I said, you will sacrifice on some up travel, uh, but you always have some other settings you can change on the car, like raising the shock tower. And, and stuff like that to get the up travel back if you that is what you like and this one can always be uh, shortened with an exacto exact knife so you can get something in between as well if if, uh, if you prefer that kind of setting but yeah 43 is what I usually uh, run my uh, length of the shock shaft in the rear So now I have uh, built the rear shocks as well um, while waiting for the, the bubbles to get out of the front shocks and as I was just filling my rear shocks here I can see that the fronts are now now ready to, to uh, be finished. So I will add a bit of extra oil here. Usually I like to add just so that it's almost more than, than the top especially when when you're having a new shock cap because you need to fill that extra um, room that you have in the in the shock cap otherwise there's not going to be enough oil so always a little bit over the top is usually what i do then i just go ahead and i close the the shock cap so you want to crank this one all the way down you can see some oil starting to come out here on the from the hole on the side of the shock cap that is normal. Just wipe that off. And here I haven't tightened uh, the screw, uh, the bleeder screw yet, so the hole is open. I've cranked the, the shock shaft, uh, not shock shaft, the shock cap all the way down. And um, what I do next is I just push the, uh, the shock shaft up towards the top ever so slightly, and I let the the oil bleed out here from, from the bleeder hole. You want to use a rag to wipe that off as it comes out. So the shock shaft is, is pushed all the way up. And now I will go ahead and, and uh, close it with the bleeder, bleeder screw here. This one you don't have to uh, be, uh, be tightening down too hard because uh, it's, uh, it's a very small screw and you just need to make sure it's, it's uh, completely uh, all the way down of course but not crank it because then you can uh, strip the threads here when, when you're gonna uh, rebuild your shock the next time. So then what I do now is that I start working the shock shaft up and down a bit Like this you you're gonna spread the uh, the bit of air that is inside uh, Evenly through the the shock here So I work it and then I end up pushing it all the way up and like you can see The shock shaft is staying there. So that means the uh, there is absolutely zero rebound Which is what we're looking for always on buggy i'm always uh at zero rebound i don't think i've ever driven uh with rebound uh on a eight scale nitro buggy car so zero rebound is always what i'm looking for and like you see the shock shock shaft stays up there nicely when i've uh, finished the shock and like i said that's what we're looking for so first shock is 
is, is done. So let's go ahead and, and show you guys how. One more time here with the se second front shock. Close it with a cap like this. Wipe that bit of extra oil coming up from the side hole off with a rag. And then next step is to, to push the shaft up to the top. And I do this pretty slow. Be ready with a rag to wipe that, that oil off. So shock shaft is pushed all the way up and I'll close it with the bleeder screw. Tighten it down just enough and then start working the shock shaft up and down a bit. So just work it up to spread the, the air evenly again inside the shock and then finish with it to the top and like you can see it stays there on the top meaning that this shock is also built without any rebound so this is what we're looking for and um, hopefully uh, yeah this gives you uh, a picture of how I build my shock and, and hopefully it helps help you out as well. All right, so now we have our uh, shocks done for our Mayako MX-8 buggy. And the last step of uh, completing your shock build is to put the shock boot on and the springs. So for this kit here, we are going with uh, black springs all around, front and rear, the linear ones. This is a uh, base setting for me. Uh, at some tracks, I've also been running the, the brown rear spring, which is helping you if the track is a little bit bumpy, um, or even if uh, you're like, if, you, if you're on a high, high grip track, it can be a bit easier having the brown uh, springs in the rear than the black. The black is one step stiffer than the brown, so um, sometimes entering the corner, the brown one will help you uh, to keep the car more, more flat uh, and not having the rear, which kind of pitching up when you, when you break into the corner. But for this build and for the base setting, um, I'm running black and front and rear springs. First step, of course, to put the shock boot on. What I do to make it a little bit easier to slide them on is that I take uh, just some oil and I put it here on the side of the, the shock ends like that you will be able to slide them on easier and then you just push them all the way up on that aluminum piece and make sure they sit nicely here they do on to the next one same thing just a little bit of shock oil on the shock end will help you to to mount these shock boots on there. Just like that. And then sliding them on. So we got the shock boots on the, the shocks and it's time to mount the springs on there. And this uh, spring cup uh, and shock boot are designed to kind of have the shock boot squished in between. So that when you mount the spring cup, this is how it's supposed to sit. So in this way, um, it will protect your shock shaft better. Uh, you won't let the, the dirt get in there as easy. And uh, yeah, it's a nice design which uh, protects your um, shock shaft for, for longer life. So I'll do all the four shocks the same way. So 
sits nicely again with the shock boots there in between the spring cup, the opening of the spring cup. So I uh, So just like that, we have the four shocks built for our Mayako MX-8 buggy. And uh, now it's time to, to get onto the, uh, the dip build, which is the next step of, of uh, the Mayako build.